Consular officer in Saudi Arabia who blew the whistle on the joint CIA Al Qaeda visa fraud scandal that took place while he was there. J. Michael Springman worked for the United States government for 20 years with the Foreign Service and Consulate. He claimed that the CIA was overriding visa decisions made in Saudi Arabia and protecting Al Qaeda operatives in getting them to the United States to be trained and have returned for covert programs in the Middle East. I began with the federal government in 1969 taking a job in the Bureau of International Commerce at the U.S. Department of Commerce. Uh, while I was there, I had been uh, working my way through the International Trade Administration, uh, doing some trade show promotions, and uh, got myself assigned to Stuttgart as a commercial officer in the State Department's uh, State Commerce Exchange Program. I went on to India as the first uh, foreign commercial service officer and then got into the real State Department and as a reward got sent to Jeddah, Saudi Arabia uh, where I was uh, chief of the United Visa Section. I had discovered what I thought was visa fraud and it wasn't until I was out of the Foreign Service ran into Joe Trento, the journalist, plus a couple of other people, one who worked for the government, uh, one who worked for a uh, local university. They told me that what I was questioning was not visa fraud, but a program to recruit terrorists from the Afghan war. And when I protested this to people in Jeddah, to the consulate, to the embassy, and to the Bureau of Consular Affairs in Washington, uh, I was met with uh, total indifference, despite the fact that the punishment for visa fraud is uh, something like uh, 10 years in jail and a fine of $250,000. Fifteen of the hijackers were in the United States on visas obtained from a program in Saudi Arabia. Only three of them were interviewed by a consular official. The Visas Express program started in June 2001 and allowed visas to be given automatically without interviews or background checks. The program was initiated only in Saudi Arabia, which is a nation known to have a large population of animosity towards the United States, which is sympathetic to the nation's own native, Osama bin Laden. This visa program was only introduced in Saudi Arabia, while no other such privilege was or has ever been extended to any of the allies or Western European friends of the United States. Michael Springman blew the whistle and stated that State Department officials were issuing visas to terrorists, which he knew were terrorists, but he was being gagged. The 19 hijackers were able to get into the United States despite information on their travel documents that should have raised some big red flags. Could it happen again? Here's NBC's Justice Department correspondent, Pete Williams. It's a myth, the report says, that all the 19 hijackers entered the U.S. legally. Some clearly did, like hijacker leader Mohammed Atta, whose actual visa is shown publicly for the first time. But three of the hijackers on board the plane that crashed into the Pentagon had on their visa applications what the report calls indicators of Islamic extremism linked to al-Qaeda. The three were Khalid al-Midar, Salem al-Hazmi, whose state-issued ID cards are shown here, and al-Hazmi's brother Nawaf. Of the actual hijacker passports, only this burn fragment of Ziad Jarrah's is shown, recovered from the wreckage of Flight 93 that crashed in Pennsylvania. But the report says when two other hijackers applied for their visas, their documents contained another warning sign, phony travel stamps intended to cover up their travel to Afghanistan to attend terror training camps. Even though there had been the bombings, in 95, 96, 98, 2000, all involving Saudis. No one asked for a national intelligence estimate if Saudi Arabia is a new terrorist state. 